guess I guess you know I guess probably maybe a great time just to understand when you did have your Sony deal and there became this competition between Quest uh, which is Quincy Jones label and Uptown I know when Timmy Gatlin said that they were going to sign with Tommy Boy but Andre outbid it outbid everyone and that's why they went to Uptown what was the situation when Andre came to you to give you a deal when you Well, had so Andre many had offered me a deal, like I said, when I um, during the time that I was working with with Nesta. Um, but in the interim, other people started offering me deals. So this was around the time he had gotten that fifty million, and he's like, "You need to come over here, money and this and that." And I, and I really was going to sign with Uptown, but then Quest and Mike Strafford, who had just transitioned from. being a program director at KJLH, he is now like the VP of our uh, A and R at 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 um Quest. So he really um liked my stuff and he liked my production. See? Mm -hmm. So I, when I signed the um Sony, you know, they would have me in their recording studio. I was producing. I was learning how to produce and working on stuff like that. So for me to have Quincy Jones endorse my production, not just my songwriting, not just me being a singer, but me as a producer, gave me a certain level of confidence. Um, and Andre and them matched that in terms of deals to go back to what you were saying, Sheldon. So I bypassed all of those production deals. I wound up signing to Uptown. my production company it was Chrissy J Music. I was signed to Chrissy J Music. Wow. So because of that bidding war with Quest and all of them, like uh, I was able to get like almost with, with, with bumps considering, you know, if you go platinum and I had, I had a two or three firm record deal, meaning if I didn't sell no records, they still had to put out enough. I think I had like 18 points, something like that with bumps. So I had a really, yeah, I had a really good deal. I got like a, a six figures. I had a studio. I got my my MPC. I got, you know, I got my little studio set up. So he matched the energy of Andre, but I mean of Quincy. But then when it came time to like production, then it was like, we want the, like I had, I did two or three songs with Kyle West. They didn't like them. It was smashes. I did, I, I co-produced Unfaithful. <laughs> they didn't like Unfaithful. Um, and I, I kept doing a bunch of songs and the way my deal was structured, because I had a production deal and it was like my first time, they, they didn't like say, here's your half your money up front half. They gave, gave it to me in third. So everything that I did as far as production, we had to sign off on. So in other words, you're not going to give me no money for this song if you don't like this song. You're not going to give me no money to mix this song if you don't like So they had me do all of these songs, and like, then they wanted me to work with Devante. And I remember I sat with Devante, and Devante was like, what's up with them songs I heard? Like, he had to hear some references to be able to... He was like, those ain't nothing wrong with them songs. And that made me know I wasn't bugging, because y'all coming to him to produce for me, and he's saying, the stuff that she got is banging. But I don't think they knew what to do with me because, again, I wasn't this new artist. I did have a vision. I did have a sound. I did have, and that didn't mean I knew everything, but I knew. I knew who I was. I was writing hits for other people. You know what I'm saying? While I'm on your thing, they didn't They didn't like a lot. Of, like, uh, It's like, to me, Uptown's sound for... R&B was limited. It was very much a uh, gap band, Stevie Wonder sound. That's like kind of where it went. Would you say that it was like really formulaic and where they just, it was just in that one, one lane, even though they were good at what they did, but. But it was one if lane. You, it, was you, yeah. it was a formula. It was a formula. And I'm not hating on the formula. I just right. didn't want to be stuck in no box and no formula. And like I said, I was dealing with stuff where they wanted me to sing songs like about having abortions. I'm not doing that. Y'all, y'all want me to be hurt, like, 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 like oh, Jackie. Well, said. You want me to be in pain. 
Mm -hmm. I want to sing about life and love and happiness and fun. And I'm not doing that, that degrading shit. So I, I remember my grandmother had passed and something just made me say, you know what? I'm not doing no album with them. And I knew I wasn't going to do an album with them. Um, I didn't know what I was going to do. That was like 94. And um, maybe about a year afterwards, I remember Andre calling me down because I'm still signed. I'm just not working with them. He called me down to his factory and um, he was like, you ready to come home? I, I always loved Andre. I never really had a problem with Andre. Andre would assign different people like James, James Jones or Tim Dog and them different people to be A&Rs and they just had their own vision. They was all trying to follow behind Puffy. So, which means they're trying to make me marry. I don't want to be Mary. I'm not trying to be none of that. I want to be Crystal Johnson. And, you know, so that was the, that was the problem. But in terms of Andre, I definitely believe that he always believed me. Came, he had me, a car service picked me up. And he was like, you ready to come home? And I was like, no. He was like, I'll give you a million dollars or something, million and a half dollars or whatever. And I'm saying to myself, why are you going to give me a million dollars and I'm already contractually obligated to you? That doesn't make sense. So I didn't really pick, take him seriously. I wound up going home and maybe about three weeks later, my attorney was like, uh, Andre's leaving Uptown because I had a key man clause in my deal. So because of that whole bidding war and everything that was going on, it afforded me, you know, the opportunity to negotiate more for me for me. Mm -hmm. So I was like, Andre, I need a key man clause in my deal. If you ever leave uptown, that I get I he was like, that's my company. I said, okay, so then you should have a problem putting <laughs> it in there. And we fought tooth and nail, tooth and nail over that, but they wound up putting it in because that was the only that was, you know, the only condition that I was signed. So I wound up getting out of my deal, only my masters and everything, because I had the key man clause. And so when he did have me come down the hit factory. He really was serious. He just wasn't at liberty to tell me I'm leaving uptown. I'm going to go to Motown. But he knew that I had that key man clause in my deal. He knew that once he was gone, I was out of there. So that might have been a year from the time that I was like, I'm not going to lose that I got out of the deal. So it's like, in a way, I won, but that made me bad too because <laughs> I got out my deal. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for being a part of Halftime Chat. Please remember to subscribe, share, and comment. But most importantly, why don't you become a member of Halftime Chat? We've got amazing videos, amazing perks, and um, being able to support the channel. But anyway, thanks for watching. Take care. I never participated in that category. Hey, somewhere in between. Or even loving us. On which I did miss you. Yeah, the upside is you can probably show up. But what was it like growing up? It is a fish that still making an impact on four houses down. I have a good one. I didn't get this one and that one. But that worst thing is just for me. No, no, no. Okay, you're okay. The only thing that was Joseph's boys and women are all spirits. Lay it. I mean, I was, I, I love, I love all different jobs.